right, awesome. Welcome everybody. Today's tutorial, today's topic is going to be variables. You're going to need them, so let's talk about it. The IDE that I'm going to be using is Xcode. It's easy and fun to use. I highly recommend it. Once again, I am coding made easy. Emphasis on the easy just because everybody over exaggerates how difficult it is. And today we're going to talk about how actually easy it is. First things first, let's go ahead and start with our header. We're going to be using IOStream. IOStream, you need to include this primarily because any program in C++ that you will use the C out command for our, to display something, you will need IOStream. And it's not something included, so we do have to mention it. Um, so that's the first thing that I did. In C out, if you guys are new to C++, C out is basically the command that reads anything to the, the screen, displays whatever you want it to. And then we have the next line of code, which reads using namespace std. The easiest way to put it is it's actually not a sexually transmitted disease, it's actually a library. A library that holds the primary commands in which we will be using in C++ such as cout to display, cin to get user input, vectors, map, etc, etc. Let me go ahead and just finish up these comments. I'm taking notes for you guys. Just in case some of us are visual learners, we got to see it to believe it or see it to understand it a little bit better. And it's always good practice just because you know what's going on in your code and you could always refer back to it and catch your mistakes if you see yourself getting any error codes or you don't know what went wrong if you if you take good notes and you comment properly on exactly what your code is executing later when you go back to it you, you won't see just a big blob of commands you'll you'll be able to to see exactly what we've entered and initialized to see what our output should look like just like the real world um, integers in C++ are whole numbers. Um, there's different variables for different type of um, numbers. Right now in this lesson, specifically we're going to be talking about integers. In my other lessons we will be talking about um, the other variables as well, such as characters, literals, um, doubles, longs. So I started off with integers just because it's the easiest to grasp. Once you get this, you basically got the rest of them. All you have to do is just change the change a word. Let me go ahead and just move this down. It looks a little messy. You don't want your code to be barricaded in comments just because then you made a feature that makes it easier to read or better understand a little bit more difficult. So I'll keep the comments up top. I'll Try to have it better organized for you guys. Let's begin. First, we're going to start off with our int main. This is the main command. This is where we're going to be executing all of our code. My first integer is checking. Notice how I went ahead and put int, and then what I'm going to call my integer. My first integer is checking. My second unassigned integer is miles. Third, we have long, which is days. And then we start to initialize our, our variables. Now we're giving our variables meaning. For in the top half of the, uh, of the code right here, we're initializing that we're going to be using an integer called checking. We put no value in checking. We just know for sure we're going to be using something that is an integer, and it is going to be called checking. So now what we're doing is we're, we're initializing it. Checking is negative 20 miles has been initialized to 4,276, days is 189,000. So now that we went ahead and declared our variables up top, initialized them a little bit lower, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call our variables. So let's go ahead and say something like, we have made a long journey of so leave a space. The space is very important because now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in one of our variables, miles. So now with that space, we'll have a better format because now we've left space for the input, which we've declared miles as 4,276. 
On the second line, we go ahead and let's say something like miles and let's go ahead and put backwards slash n so that way we can end the line. Why I put miles? It's because first miles is only going to give us a number. When we put miles after it, we're able to have the, the user understand it a little bit better when we say we have made a long journey of 4,276 miles. See, with that, it would just be 4,276. 76 what? 4,000 what? 4,000 days, 4,000 what? So now we've went ahead and declared that, put that for easier understanding, and then we'll say something like our checking balance is checking. And no need to say anything after that, just because we know that checking is negative 20. And we know that we're talking about checking account. So that has been properly formatted. Let's go ahead and end the line there and say something like about days. About a 189,000 days ago, Columbus end it there, make it a little bit neater format, make sure we're including the less than less than stood on this spot and then end the line there actually made a little mistake here I went ahead and included a semicolon when I shouldn't have but notice I don't get an error because it is inside my quotations so it just the compiler thinks I wanted it to be there. Really, I don't want it to be there. I just noticed this now, so I'm going to go ahead and follow through with it. I'm searching for any errors now. Still didn't see it. And bam, there it is. Build has succeeded. Great news. There it is. We have made a long journey of 4,276 miles. Our banking account doesn't look too pretty. And about this time ago, Columbus stood on this very spot. Alright guys, let's go ahead and do a quick little review. There's the header, the library, here's the declaration of our variables. Right below it we have our initialization, gave it some meaning, and right under it we go ahead and put them to work, call them out, use them how we want it to in our sentence or our message, and there is our output. Alright guys, if you found this helpful, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Other than that, stay tuned for more videos. I'd love to help make coding easy for you guys.